um, colleagues at the Finder who will walk you through the rest of the masterclass. So, Seth, I shall let leave it in your hands. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you, all business. So we're, we're a digital platform, I, I guess, similar to, to what's just been described. So, our role in all of this was looking at the madness of large organisations. We, we work with many of these organisations here. And really thinking, what, what is the problem when you get to scale? There's lots of people with lots of skills, interests, passions, everything that makes a human being that person. One of the issues is that most of that data has been all these different dislocated, dispersed areas. So we've come into businesses, we basically link into all these various systems, these bit of artificial intelligence to, to map and keep profiles in real time and give you a single version of the truth. And, and then much to what Kim was talking about, we use matching algorithms to run in the background and understand the supply and demand. So rather than uh, titles and skills, we're looking at the skills, competencies, interests, and in real time matching people to, to opportunity. And the way we use this is actually we've even gone down the thought process saying, well, people write and describe things in different ways. So our search functionality allows you to use NLP, you start writing it, it works out the question being asked, and matches you. Um, we do this for companies, we do this for events, we've done this for places like Davos. Um, and one of the things of which we come up to first is before we get on to technology, because that's just a framework, we need to understand what are the problems that are being solved. So hopefully to, today we're going to look at how we start to solve some of this. So as I mentioned, we, we think that um, everything is around a framework. So we talked a lot about the command and control models. So the holocratic model is, very, is the opposite. That's madness, kind of, you know, controlled madness. Um, there's usually a game I play, I won't do it now, which I say if everyone wants to stand up, you have about 30 seconds to organise yourselves equal distance between each other. Now that will literally take you about 10 seconds to do. If I was to stand here and tell you to do that, it's like a 10 minute process. So the point being is if you can create this framework, we can start to understand how to set goals and agendas within that. So the way we've done it is we use data, we, we understand what people know what they're good at, and bring it together, we aggravate it. We then use matching algorithms to connect people based on relevance. I might want to talk to someone today because they can help me. Tomorrow I might not need to know about them. So in that case, if you look at HR forums or marketing forums, it's about breaking down the silos, joining them together. The third piece is then around reward and recognition. Just because I now know someone doesn't mean I'm going to help them. So how do we encourage people and motivate people to be better aligned? And this comes down to maybe aligning against benefits, uh, reward and reciprocity. So what I also want to do is just to give a very uh, quick case study around how this can be to apply and help you with the thought process around the exercise we're about to run. And actually it's a very similar journey to, to the other guys and how they've, they've approached it. So there's a business um, which was an asset management business that moved into construction called Brookfield Multiplex, now known as Multiplex. About 2,000 in Australia, they are now about 2,000 across Europe and the Middle East. When they came to London, there were literally 90 people across about five or six different sites. Over the last three years, they've grown to over 1,000 people across these sites. So as you can imagine, as they start to grow, the onboarding process, the ability to connect, the ability, which was my favorite game when I walked into a pitch at, say, KPMG, I used to say, here's a check for £10,000. If you can stand up and tell me everything about your 10 best people that you know in this business, I'll give you that £10,000. Everyone they know, what they're interested in, everything they've ever done in their careers, all their, all their aspirations, it's a very, very hard thing to do. So as you start to grow, you've got, to, to Kim's point, when you're a small business, we're only 40 or so now ourselves, we pretty much know roughly everyone. The human mind starts to panic and run out of how to connect people about 150 faces. So when you scale to 1,000 plus, we start to get in a bit of trouble. Then when you start to look outside that 1,000, you start to say, well, actually, we've now got the Middle East. We've got different cultures. We've now got even uh, Australia. We've now got this global framework for all these different people. And actually, some of these people in Australia might work to work in London. Some in London might want to work in New York. How do we start to map all this about? So with ProFinder, we, we quickly kind of jumped in there. We just want a quick case study looking at, well, how can we start to measure the effectiveness of, of collaboration, of connecting, of knowledge sharing? So a couple of the metrics we started looking at, well, the first one was we did a bit of an audit. We want to actually understand what was the frequency uh, of help that people were looking for. So we actually surveyed the company, and we recognized that there were 22,000 uh, searches being run in August 2014. Two years later, we doubled the amount of searches that have been happening. Now why was that? Was it people who feel more comfortable? Is there more transparency? What we want to do is make it okay for people to ask questions to share their knowledge. So in this case, we actually increased the amount of searches that were happening. The second metric we're looking for is actually the average time spent. So we've surveyed now over 5,000 or so people in the workforce across all different industries, and the average person spends two and a half hours a week looking to get something done. They give up, they do a mass email, they go to Google, they call around some mates, that equates to give or take 20 working days a year of downtime. That's a month's salary of people trying to figure stuff out. 
So what could we do if we can make a more connected company and understand this? So in this case, we took the average time from 1 hour 13 down to 9, uh, 19 minutes, which is a 74% decrease in, in time lost. So when you look at this from kind of a salary's perspective, so this is the, the 20 working days per person per year, which is about 5,000 saved days, which if you look at the average salary of about 40 grand, that's a million pounds in operational efficiencies and savings, just by not doing anything other than creating a framework that allowed people to understand what they had in the business, so that when they ask the question, the right person responds to that question. And that's all we're trying to achieve from this session today. So what I'd love to just get is kind of a, a bit of a view um, before we kind of break into the tables we're at, which is kind of re reality versus aspirations. So I, I've noticed kind of some of the names around the rooms and the brands. We're all at very different areas here. I think one of the great things about when you look at frameworks within businesses, and the question was, can something scale? So t t taking technology aside, can you scale a framework that will work for a business of 300 people or a business of 20,000 people? And I think that's some of the stuff we can start to collaborate and share on. So if I was to get us ask a quick question to the group, who here feels comfortable to talk about kind of their, their digital strategy and where they are connected at the moment? So obviously we've heard, heard from Kim. Where, where do you guys feel you are in your, kind of your strategy? Who feels that they are kind of ahead and leading the pack? Put your hands up. So some of the interesting things, so three different types of businesses there, sort of IT, consultancy, we've got publishing here, we've got charities here. I think the interesting thing here is the key things still change. You're looking at people, you're looking at talent, so this is kind of employee centricity. So at every single piece of strategy moving forward, a lot of the reviews at the moment, the galaxy of this world, are talking about how do we put people first into the strategy. If you get people first, then we can start to look at the infrastructure piece, we can start to look at the motivation piece. I think whether you're a charity, whether you're a publishing firm, retail firm, whether you're an IT firm, what was interesting, if you look at the PwCs and the Deloitte's and the Ascension of this world back in the day, they're project-based businesses. So in, a, in, a, in an odd way, it was easier for them to get their head around the fact that, well, we have a project, therefore we're forming a team, so where's the best way to find this team, and how do we agile, in an agile way, spin up a team to, to solve that? They then got themselves into all sorts of profitability, siloed um, situations, so now they're trying to look at that. We look at more traditional businesses like publishing or entertainment or, or the banking sector, you know, you haven't necessarily got to always spin up those teams. So the incentive to necessarily do that process has always been a bit of a, a block for it. I think some of the interesting things to touch upon here are things like transparency. We're talking about the ability to be very open, to be fair, to show these are very brave steps for, for a company to make. So one of the first uh, sessions I'd like to do, just to get everyone around the tables uh, where you are, just to start thinking and talking to each other. And start to think around the challenges and barriers that your businesses might be facing. And we'll start to jot them down over the next 10 minutes or so, and then we'll look to, to run over what the key themes and see if there's any similarities, especially being that there are these differences in businesses in the room. And just to get you thinking, I think some of, some of the stuff we found over the years working with the businesses, and we work from Dentons and Legal through to, as I mentioned, KPMG, is there's kind of four barriers, and I've got a bit of a collaboration lens on it, but it, it's effectively the same thing. We're talking about how do you connect people to problems. So the first is, how do you get help? So you have the, the opportunity to be a siloed worker or the opportunity to be a collaborative worker. You then got the who, who can help? So your talent agendas. So how do we find the hidden to the visible? We then got actually, why do people give up? And then we've got, how do we start to work together? So with that in mind, if you could kind of spend the next 10 minutes just working in your groups, introducing yourself to each other as well, and then we start to work out what could be some of the similarities before we move on to the next session.